So we're going to look and see what is it about a GMO and Roundup that might cause this digestive disorder. The main GMOs are all either sprayed with Roundup, they're all sprayed with Roundup, and a couple of them also produce their own toxin called DT toxin, which kills insects. Soy, corn, cotton, canola, sugar beets, and alfalfa. They're all Roundup ready, and then the cotton and corn, as well as some soy in South America, are also BT producing. They actually are registered as pesticides. They kill insects. So we'll be looking at three reasons why GMOs might be causing these problems. One is the Roundup, the other is the BT toxin, and the third is the very process of genetic engineering itself. So that's, we'll call that the first possible cause, just the generic process. Typically, if you wanted to create a genetically engineered corn plant that produced its own BT toxin, you'd get the BT or the Bacillus thuringiensis bacteria, you'd, you'd isolate a particular gene, make millions of copies, and blast those copies of the gene into a plate of cells or infect it with bacteria, then clone those cells into a plant. That process of insertion plus cloning creates massive collateral damage. Two to four percent of the DNA is different. You can have deletions, uh, replications, and, and up to five percent of the naturally functioning genes can change their levels of expression as a result of this process. Now, if you look at the stomach lining on this slide, on the right, is the stomach of rats that were fed genetically modified potatoes. And the left are natural potatoes. Now these potatoes were prepared for the study by Dr. Arpad Pustai. He was paid $3 million to figure out how to test for the safety of GMOs, paid by the UK government. His protocol was supposed to be used by Europe in their approval process. He fed one group of rats potatoes that were engineered to produce an insecticide, not the BT. He fed another group of rats natural potatoes of the same variety, but not GMO. A third group of rats were fed natural potatoes, but the diet was spiked with the same insecticide that the GMOs produced in the same amount. So you had GMO, non-GMO, non-GMO plus insecticide. Only those that ate the GMO potatoes got this potentially precancerous cell growth in their digestive tract, smaller brains, livers, and testicles, and partial atrophy of the liver, and a damaged immune system. What was the reason for that? It was not the insecticide being produced inside the potato. It was the process of genetic engineering that caused the damage. When I spoke to Dr. Pustai and I said, well, yeah, GM tell us why GMOs are dangerous. He said, correction, GMOs are inherently dangerous. The process itself. And he said he was concerned that the GMOs on the market use the same process that produced his potatoes and could create this kind of problem. This particular slide was being observed by Michelle Perrow, a pediatrician, you will see her in the trailer for Secret Ingredients. And when she looked at it, she went, uh-oh, we have a problem. This is what I'm seeing in my children. This disruption of architecture of the cells in the digestive tract. There's also dis disruption in the intestines, a different slide. And she realized that genetic engineering might be the reason why in her more than 30 years of practice, around the time that GMOs were introduced and soon after, the entire frequency of disorders and diseases changed to these really complicated, often digestive-based disorders. And that the same protocols for treatment were not working like they were before. And she realized that's when GMOs and Roundup were largely introduced into the diet of her patients. And let's say she's treating a person with autism 
a little boy with autism, she'll tell the entire family, switch to organic. Because she, she says, don't just make one type of food for the autistic boy, do it as a family. And so she'll also treat the autistic boy with all sorts of other things, but then she'll hear back from the family, the sister's ADHD is gone, the father's uh, kidney condition's gone, the mother's lost weight. All of a sudden, the entire family starts getting healthier, and she knows it's the diet because she didn't treat the rest of the family. The only thing they did different was switch to organic. But here we have a situation where just the very generic process of genetic engineering might be disrupting our digestive tract, and this could help explain this finding. There were also changes in Roundup-ready corn. Over 200 proteins and metabolites shifted as a result of the process of genetic engineering including an overabundance of putrescine and cadaverine. Check out those names, putrescine and cadaverine. They're responsible for the foul odor of rotting dead bodies. They promote bad breath. They promote allergic reactions and cancer. And it's unlabeled. So if you eat a genetically modified corn product, it doesn't say extra putrescine. And it won't say extra BT, um, extra, it won't say BT toxin either, it won't be, it won't be tested, or it won't be uh, labeled. So here's a second cause of problems, the BT toxin produced in the corn and cotton and in South America in soybeans, that may be harmful. So BT toxin pokes holes in the walls of insects to kill them. And it turns out it also damages the intestines of rats. It damaged the base of the digestive cells and the microvilli. Look at the arrows to the right. You can see fragmented microvilli and also shorter microvilli. The microvilli are like the fingers coming from the walls of the intestines that they increase the surface area by having all these little fingers. So if you spread it out, it's the size of two tennis courts. That's what absorbs our nutrients. When that's damaged, we absorb less. It damaged it, the, it bound to the jejunum, which is part of the uh, small intestine, causing damage there. And it turns out in a test tube model, it pokes holes in human cells, the same type of holes that it pokes into insects to kill them. Now, holes in human cells, holes in the digestive tract. How many people have heard of leaky gut? <laughs> Almost everyone. Normally, food gets broken down into eensy beensy pieces, that's the technical term, and then it gets absorbed into the system, into the bloodstream. But if there are holes in the walls of the intestines, then larger pieces can get through, as well as pesticides and other chemicals, as well as bacteria. But let's focus on the proteins for a moment. The bigger proteins come in, and they're not in a form that the body is used to dealing with. The body treats it like an invader and attacks it, the immune system attacks it. And the immune system is a very modern immune system. It gets out the iPhone, it takes a picture of the, of the invader, posts it on Facebook, and it says, attention, all members of the immune system, attack anything that looks like this. But it uses old iPhones and it's very pixelated and so the immune system attacks anything that looks like that kind of faded photo. So it may attack the thyroid or may attack the pancreas or the microvilli. That's what autoimmune disease is. It's the immune system attacking because it is attacking things that look like the invaders. The invaders cross the, the barrier because of the leaky gut. So the autoimmune disease is based on leaky gut and the old iPhones used by the immune system. And so that actually, the, the, the leaky gut is, the higher the, the higher the prevalence of leaky gut, the more prevalence there is of autoimmune disease, of allergies, of inflammation, of cancer, heart disease, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, autism. It's a very serious condition. And BT corn pokes holes in human cells. 